Anyways, this is just going to be a little, well, not quite little, it's going to be pretty long, but I'm going to be talking over this because if you want to see the actual dialogue and whatnot, you can watch that elsewhere. Because the point of this playthrough is not a normal showing off of the game. So I'm not going to be too concerned about showing things like these cutscenes. Because if you want to explore the game normally, then you can watch more normal playthroughs, something about nature. In fact, people have put up entire many, many videos actually showing off every single role of every single character in this game. So, if that's what you want to see, there's plenty to be found online. Here on YouTube, in fact. But I'm going to use this time, this very, very large amount of time it is, to talk about how... Well, just to reflect on this entire playthrough as a whole, I suppose. This idea, this playthrough idea, was something that I had a long while back, way back when I played this game with Strom and Archeo. I did a three-player playthrough of it a long while back. It's the playthrough I keep talking about, and it's that it's actually the top save that you see whenever I access my save files on here. For amongst them are bikini and one I thought just fighters. came in passing to me when I was doing out was doing all the testing, all the technical testing to make sure the emulator worked fine and I could connect multiple controllers and whatnot and get it all working. One thing I just really had come to mind was what would it be like playing through this game with two controllers because to test the controllers I actually played through the first game flipping out with two controllers simultaneously. I never actually. I don't know if I completed no, it or not I, either, uh, but I was doing it pretty well, and through at least the first this half, one. I think, I was able to get a perfect run through, so I was like, hey, aboard, oh, you this would be cool, maybe customers. I can make a video one day of me Being just doing flipping out with two controllers simultaneously, but that didn't no really happen, and I had some doubts me. about it, so, oh well. There's, something, there's like a little depression in... Mr. Crab's back, you see, doesn't it? Oh no, it's just the shading. It's actually an extrusion. Anyways, though, it was an idea that came along a long while back, and it was actually, I believe, recently, well, quote unquote, recently, like a month ago, probably. No longer than that, because I've done a multitude of recording sessions for this game at this point, and each recording session is a week apart, but it's like maybe two months ago I was talking to Stom. Just walking around, sharing thoughts on things, man. and oh, I basically said, I've for a long time wanted to do something different. I enjoy doing Let's Plays as I do them now a lot, but one issue I'm running into is I only have so many games to play. And my preferred game to play is a game I'm familiar with, a game that I have a history with. I won't say I have a bunch of a history with Let's Play Pants, but it's something I'm familiar with, it's something that I've known for quite a long time. So I have some some level of connection with it, and I've been looking for hands. things to do with these games I have deeper connections with for a very long time. Stop that email, and I just haven't really found anything I could actually turn into a playthrough. Some large number of videos. I made some few strange things, like for example, just Radio Future, a game that I very much love, and I have plans for doing things with Blinks, for example, another game I absolutely love. And I wanted to do something this one was script spell for King Bottom, but the playthrough I wanted to do turned out to just barely not be possible, despite some help some from some other people. I may one day show what I was able to do with that playthrough be Battle for King Bottom, but I'm not gonna tease that too much just in case I never actually ended up doing it. But I'd love to be able to show that off. Because that took a lot of time and effort. And I think it's actually pretty impressive in its own right, despite the fact that I didn't manage to complete the game. I got so so incredibly close. Anyhow. So I was left with no options really, but somehow, I think it was when I was talking to Stom that one day, I ended up thinking of this playthrough, well not this playthrough, but the idea I had when I was playing this, because I was talking to Stom, the first one of the two people I was playing this game with, so naturally I suppose it came to mind that we had been playing this particular game. And that, with that, the idea of playing through the minigame on here with the two controllers, I thought, well, if I can play that one audition with three controllers, what about the rest of the game? So, I try it out, and, well, here we are. I managed to pull out an entire playthrough of it. I actually got to spin it in an interesting way. I ended up turning into a competition between myself and the AI. So, because, even though I was absolutely terrible at some sort of auditions, particularly anything in Mrs. Puff's Boating School and Sand Stadium, was that what it's called? I believe it was. 
Despite that, I managed to pull out it pretty strongly throughout this whole thing. I'm really happy to have done that. It was a fun challenge for me. And it was also that unique kind of content that I was looking for. I did something that I don't think I've seen any... That to my own knowledge, actually, nobody's ever done with the game. That's something I like doing. I like doing things that nobody else has done before. And... Hooray! And simultaneously, I get to challenge myself. I think it's... So it's fun for me in this way, and I get to present something that I'm proud of, and that it's something different. And people seem to like this well enough. I mean, Spongebob and my Spongebob things always get plenty of attention. That's just kind of the nature of it. I don't know how it really happened, but hey, if it's what you guys like, that's nice too. Because I think it's a game that's okay enough for me to be willing to play. I'm doing something in front of the two. So it's a big win-win. But I did admittedly have the thought of what could I do with other games that are like this. This is pretty dependent on me having a party game format, this whole two controllers at once thing. Because it requires you to be able to play through a game with two controllers. And I don't... I have lots of games that you can play through with multiple people. It's just a co-op, kind of like what you do in Blinks 2. Where you just have one person running around. And you would normally just control one character at a time. And frankly, it would also be too difficult for me to do something like Blinks 2, right? Now let's go over it again. Control two characters simultaneously sure the entire time. One, because you, you there are too many buttons you need to use. I can't belt. use the entirety of the controller I'm with sure one hand. So I can't lock on to enemies and links to with both I controllers at the same time while belt. also attacking. Because locking on and attacking it requires two buttons, one which is a trigger, which is incredibly oh, difficult to use geez. with only one hand. Especially when the other hand is occupied sure by another controller that's trying to do the same thing. You make me nervous. So certain games would be disqualified, so I was really only left with party type games, games like intel. this game here. I was thinking about how, and I guess if you really want to think about like Mario Party type games, games where you have mini games, like what this game has, with, like what Mario Party has, not quite necessarily the board game mechanic or board game concept Mario Party has, but the mini game style that it has. And in this game, it was convenient in that there are lots of team games, lots of versus mode type things. So that worked especially well, because I can ensure that I would always be teamed up with myself, because this game doesn't randomize your team for some reason. If you have two humans and two AI, well, players one and two will always be paired with three and four. That's how it works, I don't know why. Well, players one and two will be paired together and three and four will be paired together. I don't know why that's how it works. Well, it works for me, because it'll let me turn this entire thing into a dynamic, dependent upon me always having one team of humans and one team of AI. I won't have that same control over other games though, unfortunately, so I guess I'd want to turn any other games into like a full-on free-for-all, four separate characters, no teams. So for example, if I played something like Fusion Frenzy, where occasionally you have teams, but the teams are randomized, I don't know what I would do, because I could have one, I wouldn't necessarily have myself as a teammate. I might have two teams, but I'm on both of them. So I don't know how that'll work, but one game I was thinking about doing for this was Fusion Frenzy. I'd have to test out some games. I think some of the games on Fusion Frenzy would be too complex. Um, a lot of them take too much concentration, I think, to actually do the two controllers like that. So we'd have to see. I really don't know. And I don't know how to really organize Fusion Frenzy either, because... You don't have a full campaign in that. You just have a little tournament that has randomly selected many games that actually all of them. I don't know. You'd have to see. And then you have something similar, Viva Pinata Party Animals, which is a game I don't much care for, so I don't really want to play it, but it'll be an idea, except then you have the race portions, like, a big significant portion of Viva Pinata Party Animals is the races, except that would be pretty terrible for me, too, because you saw how racing went in this game, that Mrs. Puff Spoonies, well, I cannot race both the characters simultaneously, and the races can get pretty difficult, honestly. We would be on our party animals as well. So that seems like a game to scratch off of the list for possibilities. So I'm looking at any other games I could really do this multi controller playthrough with. At least not on the same scale, like through the entire game. Which disappoints me a bit because this is an idea that I think is really interesting. It's a nice concept. It doesn't require being able to like, bug out a game in specific ways, like completing an entire game without using a specific button would be or something like that. And it is, I think. Pretty unfailingly interesting if you manage to pull it off. Whereas, so let's say, you manage to complete Jets or your Future without using the Y button. Well, yeah, so what? 
I think this building because is you only ever need the Y button for doing specific kinds of tricks, and you only need to do those tricks no for getting flash. graffiti souls. But you don't need to get those graffiti souls to complete the game, so it wasn't that. So it's lookout seeming for a like this kind of playthrough is good for me, who is still for what I want. And may have except, and for one, games I play tend not to be multiplayer enabled because I don't really. The games I enjoy tend to be single player oriented. That's just kind of how it goes. I don't uh, as much enjoy multiplayer like a lot of other people seem to. Hey, it's Don, the guy from the prison. Anyways. So I really don't know how, what to do with it. Fuse Your Friends would be great to play again, though, because it's a game I should enjoy, but then. I just, I don't think I could really play many, many games in that game at all competently like I did in this game. Because in this game, every mini game is just so incredibly basic. It requires so little input. It's basically on par with Mario Party in terms of how complex each game is. Except, what can I get you, gentlemen? There is actually more depth and what, may not necessarily more depth always and whatnot in Fusion Frenzy, but. It's a lot more fast-paced, it requires a lot more concentration, things like that. So, I, I just doubt it. And lots of games involve, like, full two-directional movement, and things like that, that would also be a lot harder. So try and turn that into... If I could, I'd love to turn that into another turn of me against the AI, but I wouldn't count on it. I might try it one day once I find the time. If I find the time to just kind of spend some time playing the game again and seeing what I can do with two controllers, but I can't promise anything, which makes me a little disappointed, honestly, because I'd love to do more of this. I want to be able to do more unique things on my channel, because I only have so many games that I have a connection to. I've played basically all of them at this point. I like looking to new games. I like playing Sean Day, for example. It's a game I hadn't played prior to... I will make sure you get playing it prior to let's playing it service. and Great. Thanks. that was a complete no coherent worries. sentence Yellow. I played it once before let's playing it I enjoy I enjoy doing that oh, yep. I won't but let anyone else through. No at, there are times where I like to just play a game I'm familiar I with I know by heart and I don't have those do anymore you, Man Ray and I still Dirty want Bubbles, to sir. do let's plays one I still oh, love doing let's plays and there's something nice about doing Occasional blind playthrough, even though I don't intend to do all those for a while. Uh, SSX3, it was cool, like, like having that element of discovery and like, adventure and be able to show no, what my first experience sure. of the game was like. And I was like, pretty awestruck by certain parts of it too, but at the same time, it was actually really stressful doing that because I didn't really know what I was getting into and the game ended up turning out, turning out to be longer than I wanted it to and things like that. And I just had certain frustrations of the game. Certain things I don't like about that I didn't All know about beforehand. So unfortunately, I don't want another SSX3. Another game that's stressful like that one was. And soon, my little friend, so that honestly soon. bugs me a lot. You know I should get that chair fixed. Soon. We'll see. I want to find somebody else to do something unique with. Not necessarily two controllers, but that's an option. But... Yeah, I don't know. You took our home, and now I'm evil like, and a playthrough of a certain game without some specific something, without using a specific button, without using a specific ability, throughout the entire game or something like that, or skipping certain things. But it's really hard to find a game where I can figure out how to like understand on that deep of a level. Oh, hey! The uh, eyeballs for the, well, the Sneaky Kermit eyeballs are coming out of the actual holes in Spongebob's head. That's actually really cool. I don't know if that's intentional or not. What can I do for you, that lines up with the texture beautiful. Anyways. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure it's even something I can take my recommendations on because I'm the one who knows what games are the ones that I consider like, games I'm close to and games I could put the time into learning myself. Also, these buildings are really small. Like, they're in... They're like human-sized. They're puny. Well, like, if a human was the same size as Man Ray, they're like Man Ray sized. Also, there's a cabinet that's the same size, roughly, as a... What's it called? As a... Light tower? I can't remember what those are called, all of a sudden. Yeah, that sucks. Whatever, though. Yeah, that boat in the, in the background is bigger than some buildings in the background. Let's go to the chum bucket. I have an idea. Anyways, See you soon. I want to remember that word now. Yes, farewell, Hermit. I oh think well. This is the beginning of a diabolical friendship. I really can't say much more that isn't redundant about I mean, what I want yes, to do, though, diabolical. because I really only I I feel can figure out what game would work for me in regards to that. Why is Majora wearing lipstick? 
So I guess we'll have to explore a bit more, but I don't know what I'll do about that. One day, we'll see. We will see. In regards to this game, though, I did mention earlier that I don't plan on playing the extra unlockable mini games in this, but I if you guys really especially want me to, I could. If there's a lot of demand for it, I could just get a save file that's it has everything that unlocked 100. percent I'm playing this on emulator. It's like that'd be a, a problem for me to do it all, and I could play those ex uh, extra games on it if anyone really wanted me to. sorry, my mistake. But otherwise, I would say that I'm done with this game now. For the most part, oh well, yeah, entirely. Literally. For the most part, in the sense that I'm not done recording it just yet, but I just about am. So, ah well. I don't remember if there are any other games I was thinking about, Vacation Frenzy and Via Piata Party Animals, in regards to games I could do the controller thing with. I just don't really know many party games, and they don't usually interest me. I don't have a very high opinion of Party Animals either, so that doesn't help. Plus, Party Animals is a lot newer than most of the stuff I like to play. I don't think it's really myself to have a connection to it either, it's just a game that I happen to own and I have played before. So, what I'm looking for... Yeah. I'm thinking it's nothing is really happening. Sometimes there are other things I like to try doing, like the Tritzer Future. I made these odd videos that weren't necessarily weren't really me doing interesting things in the game in the sense of like playthrough challenges, but I was exploring mechanics of the game, like how stamina works, how stamina with one specific strange character works. They have a lot of fries. Wow, otherwise they're just food sitting on the tables in the background with nobody there. Did you say sneaky hermit? But I did. The issue I encountered I was well, that's that, a and I completely lost uh -huh. my train of thought, don't I? Do you have any idea where oh, this hermit is but now? So no, not any issue I well, encountered. Have you seen anything and it was well, nice doing that, and I found a couple strange things, like glitches too, weird Dragon glitches, but I can only find so many of those, like only about such time looking for them too. I, I really much liked having done that, but... Cause no one goes into the I can only do that so much of that. Did you see this? Also, by the way, something I've always Nobody wondered does. is why does SpongeBob's nose have an outline but nothing else? Oh, I guess his nose has an outline because otherwise it would kind of be hard to see against his face, wouldn't it be? Because it would be yellow on yellow. Because that's why. It just looks weird to me because I think SpongeBob's nose is literally the only thing in the game that has an outline. It's strange. Oh well. To the chum bucket away! But if I can do more things like going to the Dressery Future, like achieving a deeper understanding of a game, I think that would be nice. There's one game I could say I've achieved on some level a deeper understanding of, and that I could, well, Battle for King Bottom, and that I could, like, I had mastered that game in the sense of understanding so much of it. Not on the same level like people that understood some Super Mario 64, because that's amazing, understanding its actual programming. But Battle for King Bottom, like, if it could be done in that game at all, I could generally do it. I've... I don't want to spoil anything I have done with that game, but to say the least, I can do things that would never be considered fathomable like in that game. So, a lot of which is because other people have shown to me other things, because I looked into them myself and found them, and it was really fun adventure looking into that, but once again, it takes so much time, I can't really keep doing that, and one day I'd like to show off my findings, but showing that, those off will also take an incredible amount of time. It will take a good many hours, but I just normally ha don't normally have. See, I mentioned this a couple times, but I don't really play video games. Ever. I won't call myself a gamer at all in that I don't really follow games. I don't think about what the new next console is, what releases there are, things like that, what the con ongoing series are, because I, I, I'm i stuck back in like the early 2000s, evidently, in regards to the games, because those are where I've enjoyed a lot of games, and when I see graphics like what I see in front of me right now, I don't think of it this as an old game. Like, this is what I think of video games as. So when I see something new like Orion the Blind Forest, which you can see in my playthrough of Orion the Blind Forest, it's amazing! Because that's skipping ahead 10 years into the future. That's actually a really cool thing to be able to do. I think it's actually made for these really interesting ways. I can be absolutely awestruck by the games that exist today because it's not what I normally see. But that also leads to the issue of what I mentioned of having fewer games to choose from. But I like doing that. I like having these games to choose from. I like having this demographic of people of a certain age where 
I'm playing games that they grew up with by seeking these games. I like that a lot. But at the same time, part of the reason I do this is because I don't play new games almost ever, because I don't have the time to. It's another reason that I prefer to play games I've played before, because I don't need to rehearse them beforehand. Shantae, I needed to play through beforehand, and then I played through it for a Let's Play. This, the, oh, another email for some reason, man. This game, though, I had to rehearse this one, actually, because I was rehearsing it for the two control playthrough, but let's say if I'm playing Jet Set Radio Future or Blinks, any Blinks game, well, any of the two, things like that, games I have this serious that history with, I don't need to put that extra time into it, well, and it feels a lot more comfortable playing it a lot more stress-free, because I know what I'm doing the whole time, but at the same time, it's just more practical for me, because I don't have time to play video games. I play video games for a total of about two hours per week, and that's only to record stuff. I do virtually nothing off-screen ever. So I can play something like Thrillville, like I'm playing right now. I've recently finished the original Thrillville, and Right now, I am in the process of finishing Thrillville Off the Rails. Those are games I've played before and that I know. Games that I am familiar with, so I don't need to do new things with them. So I don't need to spend time hunter, doing anything with them off-screen. So it works well for me. So, when I'm looking into something new that I can do with the game, understanding it on some deeper level in some way, or just doing difficult playthroughs, social challenges like playing through two controllers, things I need to practice or spend time looking into doing like own personal research for, things like that, or conversing with others online about what they've found, that saps a lot more time out of me. It's time that I literally just don't have. And I hate to be uh, yet another person that you see online saying, I just don't have time to produce all the things that people expect or want me to produce. Because I know it's something you get tired of hearing. And even if you understand where they're coming from and understand how life just gets in the way of things, it's it gets old. And I, I know I'm tired of hearing it, and I have nothing against it being used as a reason for not doing things online, because it's a very valid reason, I feel. But I don't want to throw that in your guys' face, because I feel like I'm just doing that same thing, and I'm doing a service in that. So I take this YouTube stuff very seriously, and I want to always be able to produce this stuff consistently. I always want to be able to produce video content, and good video content consistently, and if it takes some extra time, I'm willing to put that in, because I will make that time, but there's always so much time I can make, so I need to operate within these certain bounds. So when it comes to making things happen, with the unfortunately limited amount of games I've played before, and the limited amount of games I want to look into playing, and the limited amount of games that I can try to new things with, it gets hard, and with how every new element of well, uniqueness <laughs> I add you can come adds hours, many ball hours ball. of extra time I need to put into it, it gets difficult. Which is very unfortunate for, I think, everyone, because and it's unfortunate for me in that I, I need to worry about time. But it's also unfortunate for me in that I feel it's unfortunate for viewers, because I want to provide the best stuff I can, because otherwise there's not really much point in putting this stuff online, I can just be playing video games my own time. Otherwise, the reason I'm putting it on YouTube is because there are evidently people that enjoy this stuff. I like seeing people who can see these videos and they talk about how much they enjoy the game when they were younger, things like that, and how much it means to them on some level. I, I, I am getting on just about a daily basis comments like that on videos like my playthroughs of earlier Spongebob games and the like, and it's always great to see people saying things like that. I love to see how I've been able to share with someone that feeling of nostalgia and things like that, and just remembering and holding on to things that we loved when we were younger. It's grand, honestly. I love doing it. And if I play something new on occasion, if they like it, then that's cool. I like making things that people like. So if something is an obstacle to me producing things people like, then that's unfortunate for me in that... Also, that's Sneaky Hermit was not Spongebob. It's unfortunate for me in that... Where did you well, I'm not really having as easy of a time accomplishing what I want to do here with YouTube. <laughs> it's just over 
We have common interests, one could say. My interest is in making the viewers happy. So, if viewers aren't happy, I'm not. But of course, there are only certain things I intend to do at the same time. Because I have certain rules, I have certain standards, like... I have trends in regards to what kinds of games I play. Because I have a certain demographic I have in mind most of the time I play stuff. But... More than anything, one rule of mine is that I only include a game on this channel if there's something worth seeing in it. So if I'm doing something different with a game, that can count. Or sometimes, hi bear. Sometimes if there's a game that's connected to a game that I think's worthwhile, I'll play that game. Like, some of the Kim's games I wouldn't have played normally. Like, Globs of Doom I definitely wouldn't have normally shown off. If it wasn't for the fact that it was connected to the other Nicktoons games, and it was the death of the Nicktoons games, I thought that would be worth showing. And then, Sundrob... What was it called? Man, what was it called? Creature from the Krusty Krab. It's the only game I really care for, in a lot of respects. Actually, I have a lot of things I dislike about that game. But, the point of that game wasn't pretty trash, it was just for me to... point out certain things about it. Especially, an issue with the credits that I talked about during the credits of that particular game. Yeah, some things I really didn't like about that game. He's his own stunt double. Darn it, game! All things dirty. Oh well. I uh, make you dirty. Phew. Very nice practical effect. Well, <laughs> those step doubles also the dirty bubble for that one portion. They never look too happy with life either. <laughs> Except for Patrick. Patrick looks very happy in that part. Strange. It's kind of uncanny. Oh, barnacles. But. So I play a game like Creature from the Krusty Krab that I don't think usually fits that sound because there's something else to know about. There needs to be something worth seeing. That's a very nice lock. But there needs to be something worth seeing in a game. So if I just play some game in what little spare time I have, and let's say I played Shantae and I didn't think it was a really worthwhile game, in regards to showing off online at all, or if 20 people have played it already, and I don't have anything new I can offer with it, then I wouldn't play it on YouTube. <laughs> so, that limits what I can do on this channel even further if I don't hold up that center, and that center means a lot to me. I mean, I care about what I'm doing here, and because part of it is, like I said, I want to produce things that would be are good for people to see, but I really, with any game, you can still find things that a lot of people like. Like, Creature from the Krusty Krab, the point wasn't that I thought it was a good game in really many ways at all. But still, tons of people talking about how they love that as a childhood game of theirs, or same thing about Globs of Doom, even though I played the Globs of Doom, was basically talking about how it killed the series and why it killed the series, and what problems it had. I got pretty angry at this, some, some sort of bugs I encountered in the game, too. I didn't expect to encounter all the problems I encountered in Globs of Doom. It just... I was off-put by that game. I just remembered it being mediocre. But when I played through it, man, I found some things that were... Like, strange. I just didn't remember that there was so much for that game that was wrong. So... That was an awkward playthrough for me in that it was... Strangely... Worse... Than I thought it was. That's it. So, there are surprises all the time, of course, but I work with what I can work with, I do what I can do, but when that num when the amount of things I can do are forever dwindling, it gets harder. And maybe I'll get a lucky break one day, maybe I'll just figure out some new thing for me to do with games that makes it easier for me to do this stuff. Like, maybe I'll figure out some way of playing each game that I've played before that is new, I feel offers something new, and that way I can actually play through all the games I've played on this channel before already. I can play through Jet Set Future game in some new way, and Blinks in some way. Blinks 1 and 2, for example, maybe even the Klonoa games, because there are certain games I absolutely love. There are certain plans I do have, in fact, for Klonoa, for example. I have some very, very big plans for Klonoa, in fact, for a certain two games in that series. And I will be, in one of those games, I will be very much offering something new. I was very happy to offer something very much new in my Moonlight Muse Museum playthrough because I p helped produce a translation for that game. So, I, 
put out a playthrough to, to some degree, um, show off that translation just to make it like publicized, and to make it so that there would be a playthrough play of the game that is actually in some way translated, so you actually understand what's going on in there. Well, yes, you are, SpongeBob. All those stock sounds, grand. Done. Oh, we're just about out of time, too. I'd love to see that happen, but, well, I'd love to see that whole like, ability to go back to games I already played thing happen, because I love going back and playing those games. One thing I loved about doing Let's Plays was having this reason to go back to games that I had played so many years ago and loved in so many different ways and just relive that experience. Not necessarily the same way, but remember those things and just enjoy a game I think is nice. So I'd love to have another reason to go back to those again, but I'll have to find something to do with that now because now there's more to do than just, well, because now I've already done the whole just playing through the game and talking over it. Now I need to do something different. And I want to find that something different, but we'll see about it. I don't really know what it will be. Why are you going back to prison? Well, that is, seems like the worst place to be. Oh, well. Pretty impressive running speed. Mermaid Man? Yes, son? Are you going to uh, fix that anytime soon? All in good time, Barnacle Boy. So, what do you say we go see the rest of that performance at the Sand Stadium? We're going back to the football game? Hot dog! I love football! Oh, jeez. It's not foot... Uh, uh, oh, whatever. Yep. Let's go see the rest of the football game. Yippee! <laughs> Yippee indeed. Ice cream, ice cream. Can I have ice cream? As much as you want, old Man, this was kind of weird how it turned out. This is just like a big talk about Let's Plays in general. I expected it to be more about like my plans with different kinds of playthroughs like this one, which it was largely about, but it turned into talking about a lot of things. I like having developed this ability of just being able to talk about things for such an incredibly long period of time. For like a straight half hour it was just now. It's interesting how that can happen. But it's a skill I'm uh, happy to have developed. I can talk about uh, things. Very good at that. Thanks again, my French companion. Oh, well. There's a funny story Although I do repeat I certain phrases quite a bit. Like, oh, well, it seems like we'd have nothing left to say. Which is a little unfortunate. But I suppose if you've actually bothered watching that whole thing and you listen to me instead of the game, you have some idea of what runs through my head when I do these Let's Play things. The crazy things they are. Because there's lots... A lot of stuff that goes on in my mind that doesn't normally get brought up. I don't really have any reason to talk about this stuff. Australia. I like this little portion. It's actually like the normal credits. I like this. I don't remember how long these credits are though, so we'll have to see how much long this episode ends up being. It's going to be a little over half an hour, I think. Though I've been recording for just about half an hour for this one part. I remember videos of that whole movie being out half an hour too. Man, I am tuckered out with talking about things, but you know what? That's not a problem. I'm in fact more tuckered out about sitting in the awkward way than I am because it hurts my back. I'm done, happy to be done with this game because now I don't need to worry about that. But see, now whenever I finish a game, I need to. I face that whole dilemma again, like that whole issue of what can I do next now? Like, what can I, can I bring something new to something? What new game can I find? I have. Do I need to find a new game by the end of this week? Do I have time to find a new game at the end of this week? Crap, this week in particular, I don't have time to do anything. Like, there's no time I have to like, play an entire new game. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Like, I don't know what I'm going to be recording next week, at this time next week. I have no idea what my next game's going to be. And I usually kind of hint at not being so sure, but I also oftentimes have an idea. But there's a lot of uncertainty, and there's a lot that goes through my mind considering new stuff, too. So, I... Yes, I've given you guys a little bit of a perspective on the entirety of that thought process that goes on between these weeks. It's big. See, in this game, they can actually bother crediting the voice actors. Ah. Uh, so much Tom Kenny. Thank you, Tom Kenny. 
And D. Baker, apparently. S teachers and students of a school. Roy the coffee machine. That's something we can <laughs> all respect. I love when credits have little silly things like that. Anyhow, I'm not going to go on about little intricacies and little details I like about certain credit sequences, because I've talked about those before, actually. Particularly in my Spider-Man Mysterious Menace playthrough. I wonder how much of an idea a person can get of how I view certain things or so watching these playthroughs, because I talk about a lot of things over time, through a bunch of different playthroughs. And now, since I've talked about my thoughts that go through my head when I do Let's Plays, when I decide what to do a Let's Play of, man, <laughs> that added a lot after I went over that whole thing for about half an hour. I hope that was of interest to at least some people. This episode's going to be something of an odd one out in regards to the whole playthrough because it's not me playing anything, it's me talking about stuff that isn't necessarily always relevant to this playthrough. In some cases it was about stuff I'll do similar to this playthrough, or maybe may not do it because I don't know what other game I could do it with, honestly, which is a bit saddening to me, but I do what I can. And if what I can do is not this, then I won't do this with another game. I'll come up with something. I always come up with something by the end of the week, I just don't know what it's going to be. But it started that week. I, and sometimes I just find some game that I played a long time ago in the past that I didn't especially care for, like certain GBA games. I might do that again if I have to, if I have to fall back on it, but I hardly even have like GBA games to fall back on like that anymore either, or anyways, and to be honest, they're usually games I don't really care much about anyways, even though I'm familiar with them. So I'll have to make a decision. I don't know if it will really especially matter to any one in particular knowing how I think about these things, especially the same audience that watches my Spongebob playthroughs. I think that the people that watch my Spongebob playthroughs aren't going to be people that are especially interested in how I think about these things, but hey, if you are interested, then lucky you. As you got to see a lot. And man, my throat is getting sore from all this talking all of a sudden, actually. I mean, I've only been recording for an hour and 15 minutes, just about a little over that, about an hour and 20 minutes in. That's something I normally do for an entire recording session. Our recording session is normally an hour and 50 minutes for me, but Rob Lemon, that's a great name. Oh, and Oreo. All sorts of foods all over. But I don't normally speak for a straight half hour without any actual breaks in it. So this is admittedly irritating my neck a little, my throat a little bit. Good thing I re don't have anything to record tomorrow night, because I don't expect to lose my voice by tomorrow or anything like that, but it'd suck. Okay, but that's it for this game. I've talked about enough things, plenty things enough for a very long time. Uh, one thing to point out, no, I don't have any intentions of playing this game in silver or gold mode, because it'll just be very redundant. If you guys want to, I, you guys especially want to, I can consider playing through the other games. Other mini games I haven't played through, the unlockable mini games. But, if not, that's that. That's it for Let's Play, Lights, Camera, Pants. Not really Let's Play, but that's it for Lights, Camera, Pants. The two controllers. Human was victorious by a pretty good margin. That was kind of cool. This is something very unique, very fun challenging in a nice way. I hope you guys like seeing to see something different. In one sense, different from what I normally produce on here, but secondly, different from what you normally see, like anywhere. Like, you don't normally see two controller playthroughs like that, or especially two controller players of this game. So, I'll be that. See you guys. And thank you. I do mean it.